Welcome to Lesson 7. And uh, you can see I took a uh, sentence that we've done so far. This morning, Jeff could not park his car in the garage, and I've analyzed it. I found the shifters, the two X word places, the subject, the predicate, the uh, ties. I've labeled the form of the verb. It's the base form. And I can see that the predicate now, uh, the Y, is a verb phrase with no time. And we can say that this actually is a, a complete sentence level analysis. Basically, we're, we're done. It doesn't seem like there's anything more to do, but actually there's always something more to do. So our next step is we want to take a closer look at the Y place or the Y sector because um, the Y sector, when we remove it from the predicate and we look at it alone, we can see that that phrase, that verb phrase with no time, has some of its own places. So let's take a look. The first thing is when we take a look at the Y sector, we can see that in the Y, there's a special place for the verb. And the verb is going to be the first place in that Y sector. For example, shopper shop. Here we have a Y shop the, with the no S form. My friend watches. My friend is the subject. It's in blue. Watches is the Y. It's a verb S form. One shopper fainted. One shopper is the subject, fainted is the Y, the X and the M places are empty, and this is the past form. Two shoppers did not see, two shoppers is the subject, did is the X word, not is in the M place, it's the M word. The Y is C, and if I were to rewrite it, I'd take a look and I'd say that, oh, here we go, C is the verb. They were arguing, they is the subject, the X word were. Arguing is the Y. Arguing is the ING form. And they have stopped. Um, they is the subject, have is the X word, stopped is the DTN form. And we can see basically what we're saying is that in the Y, the first place we have is a place to put the verb. And all of our six different verb forms can go in there. Now next, when we take a look, the Y sector also contains a place for an object. The object is really what receives the action of the verb. Uh, very often we can identify objects with questions beginning with who or what or which. Uh, an object also can become the subject of a passive sentence, and that's another way that we can decide, do we really have a subject? What is the subject? Um, for example, what did the shoppers buy? the shoppers bought presents, we can see the shoppers is the subject. We're looking over here in the second sentence. The shoppers is the subject. Bought presents is the Y. The X and the M places are empty. Bought is the verb. And presents is the object. Uh, I could also use the object in a passive sentence Presents were bought, and now we can see presence is the subject, the X word is were, and the verb is bought. Who did they ask? They asked the clerk. They is the subject, the X and the M places are empty, and ask the clerk, over here, is the Y. The verb is asked, and the clerk is the object. If I wanted to, I could take the object and use it in a passive sentence as the subject, the clerk was asked. Which shirts did they touch? They touched the soft shirts. Touched is the verb, the soft shirts is the object. I know it's an object because I could also use it in a passive sentence as the subject, the soft shirts were touched. Okay. So far, so good. And we can continue. The Y also contains a place for the complement. 
and the complement says something or makes a predication, that's another way of saying it says something, about the subject, the verb, or the object in its sentence. And that's why you may have heard there's such things as subject complements, object complements, and verb complements. Identify the complement last because the complement is what remains in the Y place after the verb and the object places have been determined. That's the easiest way to do it because uh, there's no reason to jump to the complement first when really the first place we see is the verb place, the next place is the object. So we might as well leave the complement for last since it's the last place in the Y sector. For example, George watched a movie on his TV, on his new TV. So when I analyze that, I see George is the subject. There's two X word places. Both of them are empty. Watched a movie on his new TV is the Y. It's a verb phrase with time because watched is the verb. The verb has ties in the sentence, which means that it's the head for the Y. And it's the past form. It's a verb phrase with time. When I take a look at this, I see that after the sentence level is complete, then our next step is to rewrite the Y portion. And then we can identify the verb, object, and complement places. And we can also label the phrases we find in those places. So the Y is watched a movie on his new TV. Watched is the verb. A movie is the object, it's a noun phrase. On his new TV is the complement, it's a prepositional phrase. Very often, complements are going to answer questions like, where did George watch a movie? Or when did George watch a movie? Or how did George watch a movie? Or how much did George watch a movie? Uh, those kinds of answers are going to be complements but what did George watch is going to be the object. Now, it's important, you know, we can kind of like make this a little bit more abstract and we can say that shifters, X words, M places exist in every sentence, but they're not always filled. We've seen that before. Those places may be empty. Similarly, the verb, the object, and complement places exist in every Y, but those places may also be empty. We've said every sentence must have a Y, so we're going to have a verb or an object or a complement in the Y place, but we may not always have three, all three of those or even two of those, but we'll always have at least one. So we can summarize that by saying, for example, the president waited, waited is the Y, and when I analyze the Y, I see that waited is the verb, the object and complement places are empty. The president said good morning. What did the president say? Good morning. I take a look. The president is the subject. The X and M places are empty. The Y is said good morning. The Y has the said, that's the verb, and it has good morning, which is the object, but the complement place is empty. The president said good morning to Bono. The president is the subject. The X and M places are empty. Said is the verb. Good morning is the object, and to Bono is the complement. Now we see all three places are filled in Y. The president drove to the White House. The president is the subject. X and M places are empty. Drove to the White House is Y. When I take a look at the Y, I see that drove is the verb. The object is empty, and to the White House is the complement. For example, where did, president, uh, where did the president drive? To the White House. Um, the president is an important person. The president is the subject. The presidency is an important position. Excuse me. 
The presidency is the subject. Is is the X word. The Y is an important position. We can see it's a noun phrase. When I take a look at that Y, I'd rewrite it on the next level, and I'd see that the verb place is actually empty. There is no object because you have to have a verb to have an object. And what's left is the complement. In this case, it's a subject complement because it talks about the presidency. And that's an also a noun phrase. But the verb and the object places are empty. So we can see that there are places in a sentence that can be empty. In the why, the object, the complement, or the verb could be empty at any given why. But we must have something in the why place. Okay, I hope that sounds pretty good to you and sounds clear. Um, let's take a look at another one. Movie actors usually sign autographs with their fans' pens. So I've analyzed that sentence. I take the Y, which is a verb phrase with time. I rewrite it. And the Y is sign autographs with their friends' pens. And I have sign is the verb. Autographs is the object. What did they sign? The object is a noun phrase. With their fans' pens is a complement. It's a prepositional phrase. And this is our next step, is to rewrite the why, identify the different places that we have. When there isn't a place, we're also going to show that, like we do with the am or the x word. We'll still identify the place, but it'll be empty. And when we do have objects or complements, we're going to tell what kind of a noun phrase it is. All of this, you know, makes it more clear exactly what we're working with in a sentence and what we have. And the more we practice, the more easily it'll, it'll be for us to immediately know what our sentence looks like. And that's actually our goal, is to see what exactly do our sentences look like? How are they structured? We want to continue a little bit more with this because we do have a couple more things to say. So for now, let's stop. This will be video um, that talks about Lesson 7, Part A. The next thing we want to do before we do any exercise is we're going to watch the uh, lesson, the video lesson on uh, Lesson 7, but it's Part B. And after we watch Part B, We'll try out some exercises and we'll, we'll analyze some sentences and practice these ideas.